Welcome back to the 715 Podcast, everybody. Very special day today. We have Mr. Hank Bowes in. Hank, thanks for joining us today. Um, Hank's a buddy of ours out at MHS. He just got back from basic training from this past summer. Um, Well, he didn't just get back, but he's back from basic training. Um, He is in the National Guard. Um, Why don't you give kind of the rundown of what you're doing there um, in the National Guard? Yeah, so I signed a six-year contract in the National Guard, and with that, um, I signed when I was 17 years old, so what that does is is they call me a split op. They've been calling me that for a long time, so what it does is is between junior and senior year that summer, I go to basic training, which I just did, Mm -hmm. and then next summer, I got to go back and finish my job training. So basic training is the same training that's for everyone, whether you're going to be an infantryman, a cook financial advisor sort of thing everyone yeah. goes through that yeah and then they call it ait is where you train for your job my job is uh 88 mike all the jobs are kind of number coded yeah. kind of thing it's an 88 m it's it's like a i think the official name is motor transport operator but it's really just a truck driver cool. uh the reason i chose that is because it's close to the colleges i want to go to has a bonus um and it just worked out it just worked out the best for me yeah and there's many benefits to joining the National Guard, like you said, with colleges and everything and mm-hmm. getting tuition checked off and stuff like that. Yeah, so, you, get all your, you get college paid um, for. for the most I guess tuition. kind of one of my main questions going into it is kind of when did you really realize like that's what you wanted to do and that's kind of the path that you wanted to take? So it was about two summers ago, actually. I was talking to a friend on the wrestling team. I don't know if you remember. It was Jake Gebert. Mm-hmm. Um, he joined the National Guard. And it was always something I just kept in the back of my mind. I was like, you know, this is maybe just an opportunity I should at least look into. I heard yeah. about the National Guard and mm-hmm. the part-time service that you can do. So I went and talked with him, and I had a really nice chat, and I heard about all the – he talked greatly about it. He said amazing things about it. So then um, kind of just put it in the back of my mind. A year went by. Ironically enough, it was last year – I went to a college fair. Out of all places, go to a college fair to join the military. Mm-hmm. Um uh, there was a booth for the National Guard. I was like, oh, might as well just put my name down. Put my name down. They got me in touch with a recruiter. Talked with the recruiter for a while. I figured out this, this would be a really great thing for me. So I decided to sign up, and I did. Nice. That's awesome, dude. Um, so then I guess kind of going back to how you grew up and what things you did to grow up, do you think anything specifically kind of led you to kind of choose this path? growing up or even going through high school like you said maybe someone on the wrestling team or having that wrestling team bond is there something that kind of really hit home with you kind of looking back now after basic that was like yeah that might have kind of contributed to my idea to join yeah actually um my family does have a lot of uh uh past military members uh, mm-hmm. it was like my uh, my great grandfather my great uncle um my father was a police officer at one point so that's kind of that kind of contributes to that and uh like along the line i don't remember all their names i've only heard their stories that um just of their military service so it's been in my it's been in my family's history so that mm-hmm. probably could have contributed yeah that's awesome um so then your senior year here at memorial mm-hmm. you um finished basic do you feel like you kind of have a step up above everybody because you like know what you're doing and everybody else is like panicking writing essays um, and stuff like that uh, you're kind of like just sitting back chillaxing because you know what you got going for you this a, next summer. a little bit just okay. because i went to basic training doesn't mean i'm like any better than anybody else no that's not it, what it, i'm <laughs> saying that's not what i'm saying either but um, you just have it kind of figured out already um <laughs> um yeah actually it does really help because when i'm looking at colleges i don't have to I don't have to really consider the tuition costs. As l- I mean, as long as it's uh, a UW system school, mm-hmm. it's like a, pr- a public public Wisconsin university, then I don't really have to worry about costs as much. And then I also get other benefits to the guard and pay that'll help pay for college. So in reality, it kind of narrows it down. You know, yeah. I have all these. I all the have. I have these options right here for college, and they all have this to offer. So right now, I'm looking at UW Lacrosse. So there's that, and. Uh, it just it makes it easier because I still have to apply. It's not mm-hmm. like they they can still deny me to get yeah. in. It's yeah. like just because I have tuition reimbursement doesn't mean I like automatically get, in, get yeah. into the university sort of thing. But I would say that it makes it a lot less stressful because it really narrows down what I can choose, mm-hmm. and it's just like you know having your tuition paid for really just is kind of just something off your shoulder that yeah. you have to worry about. That's nice. Sure. And then you also did mention. 
Um, Hank does play football. He's one of the mm-hmm. off-season captains on the football team. Um, and he was talking, we were talking the other day that you had mentioned um, you were thinking of maybe possibly playing in um, college. Yeah. Um, so has that like impacted you at all with COVID or anything like that or maybe the decision to play in college um, based on which school you go to and stuff like that? Mm. Um I guess what I'm trying to ask too is like how much more have you thought into playing at football in college? Um, well, I see with it makes it a little more difficult now that I'm in the guard yeah. because then I'd have to because like let's say National Guard has what's called a drill one week in a month where you go and then for like 10 to 12 hours on Saturday and then a couple hours on Sunday you're there and you're working. Mm-hmm. So if I play football and I have a game that Saturday. Yeah. I have to. I can't go to that game, or the guard will say, "Yeah, go to that game." I'll have okay. to. I'll have to work it out with the two. <coughs> and then it's just another. It's just added responsibilities and things that contribute to my life that I might stress about. And yeah. with COVID, like you said, um, just like just like you, COVID's probably affected um, affected you know like looking at colleges and playing mm-hmm. in college and yeah, just like everybody, that. Yeah. So affected everyone. So yeah, that's a, that's it's just. Kind of a cool thing, too, to see. I've said it with Vince, too. Um, you kind of grow up with somebody, and now Vince is taking his path, you know, hopefully mm. to the MLB, and now Hank's taking his path into the National Guard and into the Army. I just – it was – I had never had a friend that had gone off to basic training, and it was mm-hmm. kind of cool to – I saw your dad, like, well, you were right in the middle of it, and I got to talk to him for a little bit mm. and check in with him. And So it's just cool to see people kind of your age stepping out and – doing yeah, some is. interesting stuff that you see on like movies usually or you know you watch all these war movies and of how hard <laughs> basic training is and stuff like that so i guess you said you've had a lot of stories about basic training um why don't you start with like your top one or the one you think you can tell the best oh my and, top one well like i just wanted to ask about like how it, yeah how it generally goes yeah like, that's, oh, let's start with that yeah you so. also mentioned that when you're 17 and you go, it's much different. Were you much younger than everyone else there? Yeah, so there were quite a few 17-year-olds, but um, I was much younger than everyone there. Everyone thought I was older. Some people thought I was in my like early 20s, but I'm 17, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of interesting because everyone there is treated the same, whether you're – the oldest guy there was actually 39 years old, wow. and the youngest people there were 17 mm-hmm. at my age, and um, everyone's treated the same. But when you're a split-up, ha- normally, normally – what happens is, is you go to basic training and you go straight to your AIT. Okay. So if you are out of high school or out of college, um, I know there was some teacher there who was in her mid twenties who was a who was a split out because she has to go back and teach high school. But um, so they so they give that contract not just to high schoolers or people in college who have mm-hmm. to go back to school, but um, it is different because normally you just go straight through. Okay. Now and then once you go straight through, once you finish AIT, you go to your duty station. So that's where you go and do your job at that place, which for me is Black River Falls. But I won't be able to go there until I finish AIT next summer. Okay. Which is interesting. Right now, what I'm doing is, is I'm going to what's called Drill. It's called RSP. It's basically just like a program that they set up so that when you enlist, before you go to basic training, you go there one weekend a month and they kind of prepare you for basic training. Mm-hmm. They have drill sergeants there. They do stuff. This last weekend we did uh, land navigations, where you uh, – you plot, you get a map, and you're given a bunch of grid coordinates, and you got to plot those grid coordinates on a map, and then you got to find the angle, like of the direction you have to walk, and you use a compass to find that, and the distance in meters, all with a protractor. Wow. So if you do that wrong, you get lost because you can sometimes walk 1,600 meters to get to your point, and then which is a mile, and then you're lost. So that's where that's kind of some math a lot of information, going but... into the National Guard. Here, oh yeah, man. Yeah. It depends on your job. Yeah. Wow. Especially. So that's just kind of the general basic. So how long did you were you there for? Nine weeks, five days. Okay, so that's, in Missouri, that's right? Training. Yes. And that was the same one, Coach Diaz. So we had Coach mm-hmm. Diaz on earlier too. And what was the fort called? I, I fort Leonard Wood. Okay. Its nickname is Fort Wass in the woods because it's in the middle of the woods. Okay, it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what was the experience like going down to basic training and kind of getting oh. involved right away? So that that does have a story to it. I can okay. tell you that real quick. I'll try to keep it shorter because I can I can usually like keep these stories all along. But <laughs> basically, like I think it was May twenty fifth. I go to a hotel in Minneapolis. The next morning, I get on a bus to go to the plane. So that I wake up at like 4.30 in the morning, go get breakfast. Corona's screwed everything up. So I get on the bus, 
And on the bus, I get my flight transcripts and I realize that I'm getting there at like 7 a.m. and my first flight leaves at 5 p.m. So I'm sitting at the terminal for, I don't know how many hours that is. What is that? So did you have to take that first bus too? It uh, was messed up that bad? Yeah, there was only one bus going okay. out, so it just depended on when your flight was going. So I took, so I took that bus, and then five o'clock hit. Finally, did that first flight. With normally it would just be a direct flight. It's only about maybe two and a half hours. But with Corona, the flights were canceled, so I had to go to Denver first. Oh my god! And then from Denver, I had to go to Mini, uh, Minneapolis or not Minneapolis, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah. So I get to Denver, and then my next flight is at nine thirty. So that's okay. So I, you know, I'm calling my parents, calling my girl at the time, uh, you know, just like enjoying my little bit, of, little bits of freedom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They didn't have any restaurants open, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so we pick up some more people who had a connecting flight there as well, and then we all get to um, St. Louis. And by mm-hmm. the time we reach the spot we're supposed to be, it's called the USO. It's twelve in the morning, and technically I was supposed to report to Fort Winterwood on the twenty sixth. And by then it was 12 a.m. and it was now the 27th, and I hadn't reported yet, so I'm like, this is gonna be kind of sketch. And then, of course, no one's there. It's 12 in the morning. We call, we try calling the phone numbers to see if anyone's supposed to pick us up. No one's there, so we have to spend the night. Can't get a hotel. Oh my. So we sleep there. I think I only got about two hours of sleep. So this was in the airport, or yeah, in the airport. So I think I got like two hours of sleep. Oh and my then, gosh. Yeah. Because it was so cold and just like there's always like a janitor that'd come and wake you up or something. Mm-hmm. Just all of us. Um so the next day rolls around, they open up the USO, learn that we're finally gonna get picked up at five thirty PM. <laughs> so at that wow. point it's like, okay. And then we ended up leaving maybe seven p- seven to eight PM from the airport finally to Fort Winterwood. About a three hour bus ride. At that point it's like eleven PM uh central time. We get there and they line us all up, and then from there it's like a whole other story. That's that's also bad, but that's that's basically the process of getting there. Then I had to take a COVID screening and get all my gear, and that took it took maybe four to five hours of just standing. Wow. It was fun, but yeah, the the first little bit of basic training like that is kind of rough. So yeah, that was just getting. I, did, there. I didn't know that story. You getting there was that big of a struggle because yeah, I knew yeah. getting back too was like a. Uh, yeah, that hustle. that story I'm definitely gonna tell because that that was that so was you're at basic training at 11 p.m. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and then what happens? I mean, um, how much of an adjustment was it? Um, yeah. Like, okay, so it's it's a little it's a little different. So with co- Corona going on right now, basic training is like completely changed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Normally, you'd get there and you get to what's called a reception battalion, and at reception battalion, right away you're getting your hair cut, you're getting your cat cards taken. I actually have my cat card. Maybe I can show you. Um, you know, they're issuing you your uniforms, you know, doing financial work. It's usually three to four days of just like suck is what they call it. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. you're just standing in line all day and getting through all these things. But now we had to do a two week quarantine. So oh, what happened is, is usually you go to reception battalion and then you go to your barracks where you do basic training. We went to our barracks first. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that different bases do it differently, but we went to our barracks first and then from there, we actually didn't get our head shaven. We were just given a pair of PT uniforms, which yeah. is basically just like shorts and a t-shirt. It's black. And then from there, we uh, and we were given other stuff. We were given hygiene items like to brush our teeth and stuff like that and our boots and our shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, our, the two-week quarantine. If you ask anybody that went to basic training with me, they'll say the two-week quarantine was the worst part. Out of everything that happens to a basic training, the two-week quarantine was the worst. Because I'll describe it like this. You wake up in the morning – uh, you brush your teeth, you just sit for two, three hours doing nothing, and then you go eat breakfast outside. That's the first out of the three times you went outside. Then you go inside, wait for five hours, then you eat lunch. Then you wait for six hours, then you eat dinner. Then you wow. shower and go to bed. And that was the majority of it. Which, oh, my goodness. And I'll add this, though. We were the f- we were one of the first companies. A company is kind of like your graduating class of, like, 2021. Okay. That's how I describe a company. Um, we were one of the first companies to do that new model mm-hmm. of like of that training because they had to they had to adjust right because yeah. of Corona at Fort Winterwood, so they didn't really know what they could and couldn't do with us. They kind of just made us sit there because they didn't want to do a lot of stuff with us and then get in trouble. Yeah. Um. So we learned afterward when more training companies started coming in. Uh, they were do they were actually doing some stuff. They were doing some more of PT, which is basically just exercise. 
and like they were like the drill sergeants were kind of like, instructing them how to do some stuff but we kind of just sat because they didn't know what to do with us oh. <laughs> so that that kind of sucked i think i probably lost like 10 pounds because they didn't feed us that much and i wasn't doing much even though i wasn't exercising i lost like I probably lost like five, six pounds. Wow. I, don't, I don't want to say ten, but I probably lost a couple pounds there. And uh, like, what was your entertainment? Well, like during the entire thing, where you did you have your phone or did you have any? No, you did, to do? they took our phone. They took our phone almost right away. Yeah. So I, I could explain the phone situation later, but what the entertainment was is our barracks were old. Our barracks were built in the 1940s, actually. Wow. But, you know, they still work, so Mm -hmm. why toss them out when they still work? So we were in those barracks, and how it worked for for me, because just the the way the barracks were set up, is that we were in basically eight-man rooms. Mm -hmm. There's some two-man rooms and some 16-man rooms. But I had seven other other boys with me, and uh, we were basically the entertainment. So another thing that's interesting is, is you're not allowed to sit on your bed or sleep. Oh so you gosh. really just sit there. When I say you sit there, you, you can't sleep. You can't sit on your bed. Usually they try to catch you leaning up against the wall, which they didn't want you to do because because they're strict. But yeah, so a lot of people did Man. sleep, but they uh, a lot of people got caught. I remember some people's beds got flipped over because um, they were caught sleeping. I remember one of our drill sergeants took the bed and just like shook it so hard that the guy woke up. It was like Whoa. it was like all over the place. <laughs> But, um, so yeah, the entertainment was each other. Like we'd mm-hmm. track up jokes all the time. It was great. Miss those guys. Yeah. So have you kept in contact with any of those guys? Yeah. I've kept in contact with a few of them. I have a few of them on Snapchat. I have, uh, Trey, I have Trey on Snapchat. He's at, uh, he's at AIT right now. A few of them about to come out. One of them actually, uh, lives in Wisconsin. Okay. It's Botch. Um, he'll be out soon. In fact, I think he'll be out this Friday. Well, he's gonna be out this Friday, so maybe he'll listen to this. <laughs> yeah, send him the link, man. Yeah. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. So that's just the tip of the iceberg, too, right yeah. there. There's a lot of stories that I could tell you. I mean, on a on a on a more general day where you're not quarantining, what kind of things are you doing the whole yeah. day? Yeah. So once we got out of quarantine, we had what was called our shark attack. Yeah. Uh, that's that's kind of going off. I'll answer your question first. Normally, what it is is uh, on a normal day of basic training, you'd wake up 4 a.m. to 4:30. And then about 5 a.m., you would have your first formation. So that would give you 30 minutes to brush your teeth and, you know, fill up your camelback, which is basically just a camelback is basically just like a backpack with, like, a hose on it, you know, like a backpack mm-hmm. with, like, water in it. You had to wear that everywhere you go. So that's something you had on your back 24-7. The only time you took it off was when you're doing, like, an obstacle course or shooting or going to sleep. So that kind of sucked to have to wear all the time. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you'd wake up – uh. 5 a.m. PT, or I should say 0500 military time. And then that, we should go march somewhere and do that. And then we'd come back. Uh, they'd have us, they'd have us uh, use the latrine or the bathroom. They make you call it the latrine. If you call it bathroom, they're like, what? I don't, under- I don't understand what you're saying in private. But <laughs> it actually took me like two weeks or like a week to uh, <laughs> stop calling it latrine because I'd get smoked every time I'd say bathroom instead of latrine. But then you'd go eat, and then from there you do your first block of training, which could be – or your whole day block of training. You could go to the range and shoot all day and then come back home or – I say home, the barracks. Still still say home. Oh, God. <laughs> um, like you could go to the range and shoot. Uh, you could go do an obstacle course. Um, you could do a lot of classroom work, uh, stuff of that nature. So mm-hmm. that's like a lot of stuff. What else do we do? I mean, there's a whole different, I mean, like one day we did the gas chamber, right? That takes up a whole day, uh, during red phase, which is the first bit of training. It's like the first two weeks of training. Uh, we had first aid. So for three days we would go to a classroom and learn about first aid, Mm -hmm. TC three, um, combat casualty care, which is like how you treat a wounded, wounded, uh, soldier in, in like combat, you know, sort of thing. Cause like, you know, it's like if he's bleeding out 10 meters away from you, you have to do something before he dies or at least mm-hmm. stop him from dying sort of thing. So they teach you that in basic training, basic communications. Uh, like I said, the gas chamber, there's a rappel wall you have to do. A um, few nice. obstacle courses you have to do. Uh, there's combatives. We didn't get to do combatives because of Corona. They kind of uh. cut that out mm-hmm. because they don't want people touching each other. But that's one of the things you do. 
And how many days a week was all this stuff? I'm assuming this was seven days a week, right? It was It was pretty much seven days a week. The only day you really had off was a Sunday mm-hmm. because that's kind of just like the universal day off for military. What it would be is, is instead of waking up at like 4.30 or 4, you'd wake up at like 6 a.m., which is really nice because that's like nine hours of sleep because you always go to bed at 9. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you just eat breakfast, and then you kind of just get some free time, maybe to like write a letter or something. Okay. Then... On every Sunday, they always had this religious service. So normally the churches would be open, but the churches are closed due to Corona. So we had what was called a chaplain who would lead like a service, kind of like a universal service for mm-hmm. everyone. And then you go there. It was really nice. It's like you look forward to it because it's like the only time you ever get to listen to music because you like to play Christian music. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Captain Awa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's that. And then usually you'd go outside. They call it area of beautification, but it's basically where you do like gardening work. Or, like, you make a design in the dirt, something, you know. Kind of like you do that for, like, a couple hours. You clean weapons for a couple hours. When I say clean weapons, like, you think after, like, 20 minutes, like, yeah, my weapon's pretty clean. It's like, no. No, they always they always find some sort of dirt or carbon on it. So they make you clean for a couple hours. But, yeah, so answering your question, it's about six days a week you would have training like that. Mm-hmm. And Sunday's your day off. All right, Hank, um, why don't we crack into this? Why don't you just explain what this thing is then? First? So this is called an MRE. Okay. So this was like... And does that stand for something? Yeah, it's a meal ready to eat okay. individual, as it says on here. Now, what's cool about the one I got here is you can buy civilian ones. Okay. Like, you can buy them off Amazon. They're probably kind of expensive. But this one, this one is... Uh, U.S. government property commercial release is unlawful. So you okay. can't really lawfully buy these anywhere. So this one's kind of special. Yeah. So that's cool about this. And, and what, so you got this yeah. from BASIC. Yeah. So the purpose of these really is like, so this has been sitting in a drawer for like a month now. And it's probably been sitting in a warehouse for two years before that. And they're completely fine to eat. They're packed with so much sodium and, pres- and just uh, sealed airtight that you can really eat them anywhere. Wow. So, like, if you're in Afghanistan or something and you're going to go out in the field and patrol somewhere for, like, a couple of days or, like, a week, you just pack a ton of these away. Yeah. And then you can just eat it anywhere, which is what's really cool about this because you're not always going to have a chow hall right next to you to go get yeah. something. Why don't you crack it open and let's, yeah. let's do this thing, man. All right. You want to pass around these plates? Yeah, here? we'll do that. I'll, I'll take that. A lot of – this is might be the – is this, the like, the – we could call this a second food segment. Because we we'll count the jelly beans as the first one, but <laughs> first one with a plate and a fork here on the seven one five. I uh, I so Hank, how many of bag. these have you enjoyed so oh, far? God, probably probably over a hundred. Wow. Like there are some days where I eat two to three of them a day. It's a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, this one's interesting. Okay. Okay. So why don't you, so you can just dump it all out? Yeah. So you can just dump it out. Everything's packaged. Now this one's actually a little different. Sweet, we got a different one. Yeah. So normally all this stuff, oh, the only thing different about it is normally all this stuff right here is packed in another clear airtight bag. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's see what this has got. This is called Mexican style chicken stew. Now I probably only had one or two of these, Yummy. but I had so many of them that I couldn't really remember the names of them. It's got, no way, it's got <laughs> cheddar cheese pretzels. It's got a chocolate first strike bar. Wow. It's got, it's got jalapeno cheese spread. This one's a good one. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so this one was really good. This one's a pretty good one. It's got so are some th- absolutely terrible then too? Yes, okay. there's some that don't taste good at all. Um, the spinach fettuccine Alfredo is terrible. <laughs> I'd hate that one. Yeah, I, one... Can't, I can't imagine anything with dairy being that good. <laughs> yeah. No, they used, they used to have an omelet one that they discontinued. And it's like a, just a chunk of just ugh. That's the uh, That's the ration heater. Okay, so, so that this does, is how you heat up your food. Yeah, so you see okay, these I'm right be careful here. Then. See these right here? Yeah. These are uh these you can put in that. The rest of these you can't. Um okay. chocolate Color coated. Coconut, coconut coca. So this is kind of like a coffee drink. And it's got the crackers and it's got the how you jalapeno spread. You wanna you wanna knead this up a little bit. Because otherwise it comes out and just so. Like block. So are all of them different? Then you don't get this combination of food. Yes, yeah, so you don't time. always get the same combination. Okay. And this mm-hmm. one, uh, the one ones like these usually always come with a first strike bar. This is kind of just like a nutrition bar sort of thing. These are really good, or these were really good. I don't really consider any of this great anymore. <laughs> coming back, but 
I guess I could tell you the worst one too. I could tell you my some of my favorites and <laughs> some of my worst. I'm reading the sodium on this. Oh yeah, the sodium. And if you nine hundred forty milligrams. If you read the wow. ingredients, the ingredients the there's pouch. like tons of them. So they always come with one of these. Uh huh. And this has cranberry grape flavored juice right here. So that's not too bad. Orange type three is like my favorite. It's got red peppers, a moist towelette, idolized salt packet, which is actually really key. Um, <laughs> this is supposed to be oh, this is supposed to be napkins, but really we just use this for toilet paper and two pieces of gum. Two pieces so this of one's gum. not too bad. And then that's this is like your coffee or that's whatever. Some coffee, yeah. Okay. So what should we eat here first? Then? Um, are we, we can try eat some, everything. We could try some of these. I actually I know what these are. These aren't bad. Yeah, we can open up everything right here. Okay. So these aren't so ration bad. them out then for yeah. us here. So you're opening up the cheese pretzels. Right? Okay, these, these just are... look like those combo things. Combos, yeah. These, these look like combos. These are good. Oh yeah, these are good. I'll give you guys most of them. So I really yeah. have these. I mean, those but, are combos, um, man. Oh yeah, these are good. They're dry. They're dry, but. Mm -hmm. I don't see the difference between those and regular combos. So, yeah. but this mm -hmm. is a good one, so you don't get those all the time. No. So yeah. So what could replace this? You could get maybe like cranberries. Or you could get like, you get pretzels, just like pretzel sticks or something. They have other stuff. I mean, you were talking about the other crackers too. These one, yeah. Oh yeah. And then there's this. These are crackers. These taste. Mm, these don't. These don't taste too good. <laughs> They're so dry. The only reason you have these is so you could put maybe this jalapeno cheese spread on it. This mm. one's good. There's regular cheese spread and then there's jalapeno. And then there's cheese spread with bacon. <laughs> That's the best. So do you think they mix it up then so it's like a new surprise every time you open it up? Yeah, they do kind of. You know, okay. I, I mean, if I was active duty, I'd probably like know them all. And like there's probably different combinations to each. But yeah. yeah, they mix them up. So like a lot of them come with like packets of peanut butter. And I'd always snag peanut butter from people because nice. I love peanut butter. Yeah. And it's just like it's one of the best things that you could get in an MRE was peanut butter. So should we do the cracker thing with the cheese spread? Yeah, we could do the cracker with the cheese spread. So there's only two crackers in here, but uh, um, what's nice, what's interesting about these that I didn't think about recently is these crackers are like this right here. Yeah. They they come apart so easy that whenever I'd eat these, I'd get crackers everywhere and get in tons of trouble. Like I think it's already come apart a bit. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it just looks like a big there's saltine. Just, it's basically just a big saltine, is what it is. Yeah. So I hear Jackson all break. Oh, half. oh Hank, <laughs> I just Hank's got breaking me off. So. I just got I just got a okay, saltine I got cracker. The, I got the four. <laughs> I got the cheese here. Yeah, so the cheese. So that's already kneaded up. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of carbs. Mm hmm Oh, yeah, so MREs are filled with carbs. The reason being is because they're meant for, like, a field environment or, like, we're an environment where you're going to be marching, like, 10 miles and then yeah. running and doing combat. So, like, you need just, like, super quick energy to, like, you know, keep you going. It's not like a keto diet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All meat and That stuff. sort of thing. Yeah, the most protein you're going to get is, is out of these right here. And this one's pretty good. Some of them are just like all carbohydrates. Let me try this real quick. So are we going to save that one for last? Um, This one? Yeah. Because mm, that's our stew, right? Well, you said there's also something with this heating pack. Mm -hmm. Is that something we have to get going? And yeah, so that's probably what up? we'll get going here. And what okay. we can do is I'll if this you fits, that, so you can actually warm this up. This is just mixed fruit. Warming up the yeah. fruit? Yeah, so you warm can warm fruit? up fruit. What? Yeah, it's kind of like a. It's good. It's it's not okay. bad. What is it? Fruit cocktail and light syrup. One of these. One of these actually has, not this one, but I've seen it has like a half a gram of trans fat in it. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is like. I think I don't even know. I don't know. That's like banned or something. You never see it in like actual foods today. You only see it in foods that they give us. <laughs> but um, here's what I'll do. So what yep. you do is is you open this up. And then where's that? I need that right there. Okay. This is like a little cardboard thing yeah, that it's I was a using little, for a coaster. It's a little pouch. What you can do is you stick this in there. Try not to break the sides up. And then I don't want to overcrowd it. I mean, I could try. I could try fitting this in there. This one's pretty small. Okay. So I'll try fitting this in there. Uh, no, I don't want to Just do the up. one, yeah. Yeah, just I'll just do the one. Do the one I've, I've tried up. two, and sometimes it messes it up. So what you do is you just pour a little bit of water in. and then Dang. A little bit of up. science. <laughs> you just got to shake it up. It's on the wrong side, which is fine. I'll take a second. You 
can't smell that working. Oh, dang. Yeah, it, it's, it's steaming. Wow. It's steaming a little That's bit. That's quick, man. Yeah, I might pour a little bit more just on this side. You can hear it. It's the sizzling. Side, there we go. The side that the heater's on. Dang. Wow. That's got to be... That's chemistry yeah. for you, man. And then what we can do is... Just give it some oxygen. Put it in here. Get that so is that oxygen. hot to the touch then? Oh, yeah. This is like... It gets really hot. Like okay. it can burn you. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to tuck this in there. Dang. Shake it up a bit more. Try to get I didn't more think it that react that somewhere. quick. Yeah. yeah, it reacts pretty quick. And then... Yeah, so that's... That can pretty hot. Sometimes they don't work 100%, but this one looks like it's working. I'm not going to send off a... No or anything, I don't think that's I? smoke either. I think that's it's steam. they're not smoke steam. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. All right, and then I'll just once that's got enough oxygen, close that off. And then it says ideally you want to like lean this up against something, but I think it's just fine right there. You, okay. can, you can hear it. Mm -hmm. Here, actually, I'll hold it up to the mic. It's mm -hmm. sizzling. It's sizzling a little bit, yeah. So would this kind of be like your protein quick bar, like a Cliff Bar or a? Yeah, kind of. I, it doesn't have a whole lot of protein. What it does have, though, is a lot of micronutrients, which is what an MRE lacks a lot of is micronutrients. It's mostly just, like, empty carbohydrates and everything. Now, this is full of sugar, but it has, like, a ton of vitamin, like, B, C, A, E. It has a ton of the vitamins that you're going to want. Okay, I'm not sure how we're going to – you just want to rip your section? Yeah. Jackson? It's, that goes it's really like a, well with peanut butter, by the way. Maybe, like, a twist? I don't know. It oh, is it's harder. all coming out. It's slimy. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, there we go. It's it's a little dense. There oh, we go. Yeah. So yeah, this isn't bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So this is um. What's that? Four grams of protein. So it's not like a protein bar. It's more of like a sugar mm -hmm. sugar burst for you. So this one's actually pretty rare. You don't see these okay. in the MREs. You actually see these more in the MREs that kind of where the entree kind of sucks. So we'll see where that happens. Like. Chicken chunks is one of the worst ones that people say because it's like this, it, like, you could eat it and you'd think it's tuna, but apparently it's chicken. Okay. So, you get about 15 minutes to eat this whole thing. So, if oh, you're a really? fast eater, it's nice. What happens is, is you got to wait for that, bumping this, you got to wait for that to heat up. Mm -hmm. So, do you normally you do open that first up. then? You open the it up and put that in right away? Yeah, I okay. open it up and put, the, put that in right away. So, is there anything else you want to open up? We could, eh, we'll try this mixed fruit in a bit. So you got to heat up everything that's this dark grayish color. You don't have to heat it up. So what a lot of people do is is they can't eat fast enough. Uh -huh. So they don't heat up their uh, their uh Yeah, their I entree. do feel the yeah. chunks of mixed fruit in there. Yeah. There we go. So some people can't eat, heat, can't eat it fast enough. So what they do is let's see. Is this still hot? That's yeah. That's still pretty hot. I'm gonna put this in there. I don't think I've ever tried this heated up. I always just ate it cold. Mm -hmm. So, there's that. Close that up, see if that heats up anytime soon. The Mexican stew, let's go. Yeah, so normally you just eat it out of the bag. So you get that spoon. Oh, this is pretty good. So normally you just... See if I don't... Oh, perfect. There we go. Nice. So that one... Okay, yeah, so this one's probably... <laughs> this one, this is more, uh... This is more realistic to, a. Uh, that's okay, if you that... hold on to this, I'm going to get this spoon so I can dish this out. How hot is that, Grant? It's fairly hot. It's pretty hot. It it'd, can burn, get... it'd burn my hand if I were to, like, grab it. Yeah. But it if can... I just kind of balance it in there. It can definitely get it more hot. So, yeah, this is this is really watery, which you find in a lot of MREs, but it's not bad. So I'll Thank you, sir. A bit of that. Yeah, it just looks like kind of like a taco... That's plenty, that's plenty, that's plenty. There is, there is a uh, MRE called a... I think it's like a taco bowl. Good now thing you got good. the crackers, though. You can just soak all yeah. that moisture right up. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Actually, yeah, crackers. If you uh, crunch, crushed up those crackers and put in with this, that'd be a good, uh, that'd be a good thing to do. People start to eat so many of these that they uh, start trading stuff with people. <laughs> so, like, let's say I got, let's say I got a Asian style beef strips. It's my, it's like your favorite MRE, and you got, and you got Mexican style chicken stew. We would trade MREs. We okay. have to hide it though because that gets us in trouble. Oh, you're not allowed to trade. No. Okay. Um, 
you are if you don't get caught. Let me just say that. <laughs> so, There's a lot of things um, you can get away with. So, so do you have caught. plates and everything, or are you just supposed to eat it, like, out of the bags? Yeah, so normally you take the spoon and you just eat it straight out of the bag. Okay. But here we got we For got purposes, this. for recording purposes, yeah. we got plates for ourselves here. Mm-hmm. This one's not bad. It's actually got a little bit of flavor to it. Yeah. Yeah, and I wouldn't, like, guess that it was just heated up in a little... Mm-mm chemical reaction which is what cool about these things for this too you know mm. that's the thing but i could see how these get boring oh yeah especially if you eat the same ones so like this mm -hmm. um those crackers or the cheese spread mm -hmm. i think it all gets really familiar and it's not bad but i mean the, the chicken definitely tastes a little weird but yeah, yeah the chicken tastes, chicken tastes better than i thought it was chicken and mres always taste pretty bad so like if you were to eat dinner in like the mess hall or whatever it is, at at camp actually, it's actually it's called the defect. The defect. Wow, what's the difference? They don't serve you these. No, actually, that's the the food at the defect is really nice. It's um well usually pretty nice. It's interesting because the food they serve there is actually civilian contracted, so the military doesn't have a whole a lot of say of what they serve. Mm. They kind of just take us there and it's like, all right, this is what you're eating. Okay. But usually it's pretty nice. You got a really, at least the one at Fort Winterwood was really good. You got this really nice salad line. Usually some good protein and some carbohydrates and some vegetables. In the mornings, they had these little cups of cereal. Nice. But with Corona going on, um, you can't really, they don't really let us in there as much. So mm -hmm. normally you'd be going there a lot. And now, um, now because of Corona, for some reason, we just can't go to the defect as much. Like, cause you can only okay. fill it up halfway now, cause you got to sit every other seat. Oh uh, yeah. Things like that. So like, in reality, like, if we're at the barracks all day on a Sunday, like we may not even go to the defect, even though it's like, not even joking, you 20, 20 meters away from our barracks. Like we couldn't even go there, just cause of Corona and things messing Dang. it up, which kind of sucks. So then, so are there a lot more breakfast of MREs. There are. There are a few. Um, but they just you just randomly get them. Yeah, so you, you just randomly get, get them. Yeah, there's also there's also vegetarians. There's like maybe two or three vegetarians, and they actually also have halal meals, which uh, which are don't have pork in them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which so like we had some uh, we had some Muslim uh, soldiers there that didn't eat pork, so they always got halal meals, and those ones always had some nice stuff. They always had like M and M's and like Skittles and like some other like Dang. some cobblers. Like they always had like the some of the better stuff, mm -hmm. but none of them had pork in them, so it's fine. I guess we could try this right here. This okay, is yeah, the good. fruit. Yeah. yeah. That's the last thing, right? Besides yeah, these besides drink that, things. Yeah, besides which we could try. Which I could show you. In fact, I could probably run off camera. What you do is you drink it out of the bag. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, look at that. So this will actually look familiar. You know, you know those fruit cups? Yeah. They look like a fruit cup. Yeah, those oh, yeah, do. Yeah. So I guess I could just dump this out on the plate, and we could try eating it. Yeah, I'll just take a little bit. That was really loud. And it's supposed to be warm, huh? Uh, you can eat it warm or cold. That's the thing. How much more do I have in there? I don't know how much more I have in there. Check. Oh, no, that's a pretty good amount. Yeah, that's good perfect. So, yes, yeah, so most people eat stuff like this cold just because you don't really have time to heat it up. Mm -hmm. But it gives you that you can heat it up if you wish. That's the thing. And you can't heat up some of that other stuff that's packaged different, right? If it's packaged like this, um, I think it'll start to, like, melt the plastic or something. Okay. I don't know. How, I don't know what it is. But yeah, this thing gets this thing can get pretty hot if it's used right. Sometimes it doesn't heat up right. Like I've had times where I'm trying to heat something up and it doesn't heat up. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you get other sides. Like we got fruit, mixed fruit here. Sometimes you get like cheesy potatoes. That one's a real, that one's a snag, and that you can heat up. Or like instant mashed potatoes. If you don't heat that one up, it's almost like impossible to eat. <laughs> you could eat it, but you're like, Ugh. yeah. Mm -mm. Well, yeah, so this one's not bad. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for bringing that on, yeah. dude. And then the we have right these here. other two. Yeah, we have that. And then the, um, this as well. Chocolate hazelnut coca. Yeah, so that's actually, that probably wouldn't be too bad. I'm going to talk about this, though. This looks, is looks like a water bottle. Yeah, it is. So what you do is you open up the top and you just pour in water, okay. shake it up, and then drink it. I almost thought it was chocolate protein powder, which is kind of just like chocolate milk. It's pretty good. This right here is a little packet of idolized salt. Which is actually really nice because at Fort Winterwood, Missouri, uh, in August, we would go to the range or we'd go out in the field, and it gets so hot that you just sit there, and it's like I feel like I was in a sauna. 
Mm-hmm. You're just sweating constantly for hours. So you, you get an MRE for lunch and you get this. You just like open it up and just pour it in your mouth like a shot and just like chug it down. Just because you need the salt because like you're they, sweating reco- that much. they recommend it because you're sweating so much and you just need the electrolytes. Wow. So this right here was key. Um, I know some people that were like on the verge of like falling asleep and passing out and they had one of these and then they were like fine afterward like 30 minutes later. It's pretty nice. Nice. But they suck. It's like taking a shot of salt. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fun. So All right. So Hank is back quick. with the. Uh, why don't you crack it? And he got that. You got that. Um, the what's hazel- it called again? Chocolate hazelnut cocoa. Okay. Beverage powder. So there's all different kinds of beverage powders. There's. I think there's Is there always milk. a beverage powder in them? Uh, not always. Um, some of them are quite different. I really hope this doesn't spill everywhere. Oh no, we're good. See that just looks like chocolate milk, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So he just went and added some water from the faucet in the bag and then shook it up a bit. Thank Let's you, sir. Yeah. I mean, that it's tastes a lot like my protein powder that I drink. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty much just what it is. That chocolate. Yeah. I chug it. Not bad. It isn't terrible, no. Mm. I mean, good taste of chocolate. After I I usually traded these items away for something else, like a packet of peanut butter or something, because that's my favorite. Yeah. But yeah, those those were those were highly contested items. That's sick, man. Thanks for bringing those on. That's cool, and I'm yeah, glad we got like a good batch too. And like, yeah, we got some good stuff in that. The entree was kind of. Eh. There's some better ones, but other than that, we got some good stuff. Yeah. So Hank, you mentioned earlier that gas chamber mm-hmm. thing. Can you touch up on that a little bit more? Yeah. So I like the gas chamber. <laughs> well kind of it was um so the gas chamber was in a graduation event so it's something you have to do in order to graduate basic training so what happens is they take out to this training site and then you'd think it'd be like this kind of like big area kind of it's this really small really sketchy looking concrete box just on top of a hill and um Mm -hmm. in inside there's this like table that looks like it's been there for 20 years and they got this big hot plate and what they do is is it's tear gas so it's not like a it's not like a intense but it's like tear gas mm-hmm. so they take this pill of it and they burn it on the hot plate which releases a bunch of tear gas into the room they bring us in in groups of nine probably usually fit in more because of corona nine and then um and you have to we had to get through 240 people in a day and i was one of the last groups to go in so every group of nine they take a new pill and burn it mm-hmm. so oh, by the yeah. time i got in there I don't know, you can do the math. There was lots of pills of tear gas that had filled up in the room. Mm-hmm. So what it does is it's actually supposed to teach it to put on put on a uh, rack to a chemical attack. So you got this gas mask, and you have to put it on in nine seconds before going in the room. And then you get in there, and what they make you do is, is they make you do, like, some exercises to make sure you're breathing. And then they have you break the seal on your mask and then reclose it sort of thing. And then eventually they make you take your mask off completely. Damn, and then from wow. there, they make you, they make you like, uh, there's something called the Soldier's Creed. So, like, I start reciting the Soldier's Creed, and by, like, the second verse, I take a breath in, and I'm like, because <laughs> it's kind of a weird sensation because. Yeah, what's it feel like? Um, It's like you're trying to breathe in air, but you can't breathe in anything. Oh it feels like gosh. you can't breathe in anything. Wow. So I'm sitting there thinking I'm not getting any air in. Even mm-hmm. though you kind of are, you're not. Yeah. And um, your eyes start to tear up. You start, like. Uh, drool starts coming out snot starts coming out and uh, what's another thing interesting that i never knew about it is when it reacts with skin it makes your skin burn so we had on our uh, acus like you know our big coats Mm -hmm. and uh what the skin that was exposed you could start feeling burning like a really bad sunburn it's like how i like to describe it so like it's like a really bad sunburn when you press it up against water or something Mm -hmm. so they they kept us in there for maybe 15 seconds and then they open the door and at that point, it's like, let's get out of here. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm about to pass out because, like, I don't think I'm breathing anything in. And you weren't allowed to run out. You're like, you're not allowed to run in the small room. Uh-huh. You had to walk so, so the first person there was like, I'm in danger. I got to get out of here. He starts running. He gets body checked into the wall by one of the drill sergeants. Because in situations, like, they're not allowed to, like, you know, hit us. Yeah. But in situations where we might be dangerous, they can, they're can they allowed to hit us or, like, you know, really – really like put us in the dirt or something yeah. so he body checked this guy into the wall then the second guy starts to run out he gets body checked into the wall <laughs> third guy was a little smart and he starts walking you know, f- speed walking 
and then you speed walk and then they make you run around this big rubber pit flapping your arms around trying to get the uh tear gas out of your uh your uniform because mm-hmm. you know it can get inside your sleeves and stuff mm-hmm. and then after about 30 seconds you're like just finally start to breathe and start to calm down wow. it's real good but when you run out they always got pictures of people just like spitting everywhere and just snot falling out of their nose because apparently it just like clears your sinuses it just sends it all straight through oh my yeah. gosh so it kind of sucks but it's really short like it's really fast yeah. Did it feel fast in the moment, or did it feel like the longest? Probably forty. In the moment, seconds. it felt. In the moment, it felt like a long time. Yeah. And then when you're out, you're like, okay, that wasn't so bad. Okay. You know, I feel fine now. I have clear sinuses. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> so, um, you mentioned the range too. What kind of guns were you able to shoot? Um, the only the only guns that we shot there were the M4 carbine. Okay. So that's uh semi-automatic and fully automatic. Didn't get to shoot at fully automatic, unfortunately. Okay. But maybe at AIT. Yeah. But for basic training, you know, not really. It's more of marksmanship. You mm-hmm. yeah. want to make sure you can shoot accurately, zero your weapon, clean it, reload, deal with malfunctions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we shot we shot there a lot. There's a whole def- bunch of different ranges we went to. You have to be able to qualify. So the minimum is, is they got these different targets that pop up at different ranges, the farthest being 300 meters, which is pretty far. If you're yeah, shooting yeah, through iron sights, that's kind of hard to hit. So and you have to hit 23 out of 40 targets. So, and there's prone supported, prone unsupported, and then you have to do shoot 10 from kneeling. So, kind of a different setup there. But the only weapon we got to shot was the M4. Okay. Interesting fact is you're not allowed to call them guns. I'm not 100% sure why, but if you call them a gun, you'd get in trouble. You're only allowed to call them weapons. Okay, weapons. Yeah, there's a lot of small things, like you have to say latrine, or you have to say weapon, not gun. It's like little small things that you have to be conscious of Mm -hmm. when you're there. Which which would which would really kind of makes it a little more difficult. It's like you have to be really aware at all yeah. times that you're not doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah, but I guess that'd be the case too. Once you would to get sent, you know, to your job or into combat mm. or whatever, you just gotta yeah. be aware of every little thing, kind of like that. So. They try to keep it as disciplined as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then what was that other story you were gonna talk? You were gonna talk about um, one more? There was this one. This one's kind of interesting. So. This one's kind of just like a personal story that happened to me, but it's yeah. kind of a good it's kind of a good story of like the things that can happen to you at basic training or the things mm-hmm. that can happen. You know, drill sergeants like to play games with you. Drill sergeants are your instructors. They teach you, they discipline you, they get mean with you. You know, they get up in your face and scream at you. So, it was about 6 days into original training and those 6 days were going by so fast cuz red phase is where they is where they like discipline you the most, make you do the most push-ups and like you know sprint there, sprint back sort of thing. You know mm-hmm. you did this, you have to get in trouble. So it was like day six. It was a Saturday. We didn't have much training to do because the civilians were gone, and I don't know. We just were kind of at the barracks all day. So at that point, um, we were out of hand soap for like ten days, or no, we were not ten days, like five days, because we never had a chance to go down and ask for more hand soap because we were just on the move all times. Mm-hmm. So. You know, we were just sitting there. They told us to clean the barracks. So we were cleaning. People were buffing floors, mopping, sweeping, wiping stuff down with bleach. Um, I asked a buddy of mine named Brent, who I actually became really good friends with. He's a college professor, um, to go downstairs with me. Because everywhere you go in basic training, you need what's called a battle buddy. Mm. So if you try to go to the bathroom, you need a battle buddy. If you need, if you want to go ask a drill sergeant something, you need a battle buddy. Yeah which is nice now that I don't need someone to go with me everywhere. Mm. <laughs> so I asked him to come downstairs three flights of fours to what's called the CQ desk, which is kind of drill sergeant headquarters. So I went there. I did my whole spiel. I had to look at a black dot. I couldn't look at them. And then I was bef- but I was about to say something, but before I could say anything, a drill sergeant, he wasn't my drill sergeant. He mm-hmm. was like another, I'll say he's another class's like teacher. He was another class's drill sergeant, another okay. platoon's drill sergeant. And he starts, like, questioning, and it's like, you know, Private, what makes you think you can make it in my platoon? Just like, you know, like, class sort of thing. There's, like, four platoons in a company. Mm-hmm. What makes you think you can make it in my platoon? And it's like, um, like, you know, stuff like that. And then, like, he uh, tried clarifying the question. And so I kind of just, like, played along because I knew it was kind of like playing a game. So I said, like, I did good on my PT test drill, Sergeant. I can pay attention, and I clean when I'm supposed to. You know, just giving him some yeah. reasons why my, my thought process was, and I actually clarified the question with him, was what makes me think I could make it, not like not like my pitch to be in the platoon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was going off of. But then he says, okay, stand fast, basically means stay there. 
And then after 10 minutes, I was like, he's not coming back. So we went back upstairs, which was a bad idea. And then eventually oh, I got called my. back. I'm going to try to speed it up. I got called back downstairs. I took a battle buddy with me. And then my drill sergeants are there with another completely different drill sergeant. And they just start berating me. And it's like, why do you hate first platoon? Like, what the F's your problem with, with me? What's the problem with the, your uh, your uh, your friends in first platoon, you know, sort of thing. Just like, and eventually they say, it's like, all right, since you don't want to be in first platoon, you're going to go to third platoon because third platoon was like the, uh, the drill sergeant that I was talking to. Oh, you're going to go upstairs. <laughs> you're going to pack up all your stuff and then you're going to come back downstairs and you're moving to third platoon. You're getting kicked out of first platoon. So this is like a Saturday. It was like really relaxed. So I'm like, as I'm walking away, I'm like, there's no way. It's like, no, they're just joking with me. And then I get about halfway down the hallway. It's like, they're not joking with me. <laughs> they're not they're not joking with me i gotta do this dang it so then i head upstairs and i start packing up all my stuff i'm doing it slowly because i'm like man what's happening am i actually getting kicked out for like a misunderstanding mm -hmm. and then i pack up all my stuff i get called down twice because i'm going too slow and then keep in mind this is everything i owned at the time this yeah. is probably like like 120 130 pounds of gear at that point based on what we were given mm -hmm. and then uh yeah i went downstairs uh, went with third platoon. I actually put my bags with all of my stuff, which was basically my wife, in some random person's room or bay, and it wasn't locked because I didn't put my locks on them. You can put the locks in your bags. I didn't put them on there. So in reality, anybody could have walked in at any moment and stole all my stuff. Oh my and God. I would have been screwed uh -huh. for the rest of basic training. So then, to keep things short, basically... From third platoon, their drill sergeant asked me, "It's like, do you think third platoon or first platoon is better?" At that point, was they're telling me I was unloyal from first platoon, so they're like, "I said first platoon's better," and they're like, "Well, why the f are you here? We're gonna..." And they then they kicked me out, sent me to second platoon. Oh my god! <laughs> and then second platoon was interesting because then we went to go get dinner, uh -huh. and then I was the last person in line. I went to sit with second platoon, and they ran out of seats, so then I had to go sit with third platoon. Uh -huh. And then from third platoon, I didn't have a battle buddy, so like, and my second platoon started leaving, so I was sitting there, and I was oh like, I'm stuck. Oh my god. So then I get up by myself, and I don't get caught running to put my Troy away by myself, which you're not even supposed to do. You're supposed to go in groups of like eight or nine. And then I run out all by myself while they're counting off people to make sure everyone's there, and then the drill sergeant just starts like berating me. I was like, what, what am I doing? Like, what are you doing? It's like, that's strike two. Next strike, you're out. And then I saw him go over and talk with some other drill sergeants, and they just start laughing and giggling. They, you know, just planning what they're gonna do to me. Uh -huh. And then all of a Jeez. sudden he's like, "You're not in the formation, correct? You know what? That's strike three. You're going to fourth platoon." Now. Oh my god! So now dude. I've went through every single platoon. I go to fourth platoon. I do more PT. I did p PT with third platoon. I did PT with fourth platoon. So that's probably like my third or fourth hour of working out that day. So I'm exhausted. And then from there, it's like I do final formation with 4th Platoon. And I'm like, I don't have a room to go to sleep in tonight because all my <laughs> stuff's gone. All my stuff has probably been stolen in some person's room. Uh -huh. And I don't even know. And at this point, they're like, if you get kicked out of 4th Platoon, you're getting kicked out of the company and you're not going to graduate. You're not going to get out of here. Jeez, so I'm like, okay, so what's going to happen? I didn't see I at the time, I was like, there's no way I'm actually getting kicked out of the company because I didn't do anything wrong. People that got kicked out of the company were the ones that were the ones that were neg negligently, neg negligently discharging at the range, which means they were shooting when they weren't supposed to, which mm -hmm. actually gets you kicked out of the army. But Were there people that got kicked out for that? Yeah, I think there's oh like two God. people who like fired whenever every weapon's supposed to be unsafe and like, oh, you hear a gunshot. Who was that? Oh, he's gone. You know, it's not being safe enough. Mm-hmm. So at that point, they just, like, send me the fourth producer. I don't want to deal with you anymore. I'm going to go home to my wife. She hasn't seen me in, like, 12 hours. So he sends me over to first platoon, and then I just get smoked for, like, for like 20 minutes outside. And what sucked about it is, is some random person had to come and stay with me because I needed a battle buddy for that, too. So some random person who I ended up becoming good friends with went out there and just, like, got destroyed with me. So then there's still my stuff, right? Uh -huh. So I go get my – so he's like I – tell, I tell my drill sergeant, I was like, my stuff is, like, unsecured in this person's room. He's like, well, why would you do that? It's like, I didn't have time to secure it. And he's like, oh. Because, like, you know, with all of them messing around with me, it's like my stuff might have actually gotten stolen. Yeah. So I go to go get my stuff, and guess what they did to my stuff? 
they took every single thing I had and they just threw it as far as they can. So, like, I got stuff that's, like, lying on top of a locker <laughs> 15 yards away down the hallway. Uh-huh. So I get, like, two buddies that actually were, like, like OGs, and they come and they help me put it all up because I got 20 minutes to take the 120 pounds of stuff and put it back in my wall locker in the order that it has to be in. So I had to do that. So I had to do 20 minutes. I had to put it all back in the bags, carry it upstairs, down the hallway, put it in my wall locker in like 20 minutes. And I was able to do it with the help of my buddies, which I never would have been able to do. And then I got inspected, and he didn't say anything. And that was that day, and I thought I was about to get kicked out. At this point, I was like, you know what? I tried to get through basic training without the drill sergeants even learning my name, and now now they hate me. (laughs) And you want to know, know, I'm just going to add this, the cherry on top. So lights out happens at 2100 or 9 o'clock. We're supposed yep. to go to sleep. At that point, I didn't take a shower or brush my teeth or do anything because I was too busy putting my stuff away. Mm-hmm. Our drill sergeant, the one that was like, you know, berating me or smoking me, he, I, I, what I thought happened is I thought he walked out the door to go downstairs to the CQ desk, downstairs, like way out of sight, way out of hearing. Instead, he went to the first door before that, which is like, so you got the door downstairs and you got this door. He went into this door, which is a drill sergeant office. And there's somebody who's on uh, fire watch or like a guard duty. Because there's somebody always on guard duty to make sure people don't run away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really what it is, is make sure people don't run away. So I was like, and lo and behold, it's the guy that had to do like the push-ups with me outside and everything. He actually helped me bring my stuff upstairs as well. I go to him. He's like, is he gone? And then I just hear from the door. It's like, who said that? So I turn around and run to my wall locker. He gets out. He goes to that guy who got or who was already screwed because of me, and he goes, "Did you say that?" And he's like, "I didn't, drill sergeant." He's like, "Well, who said that?" He's like, "I don't know, drill sergeant." And he comes into our room, and he's like, "I don't know what it was at that point, but he really could have just destroyed us. He could have made the whole company go outside because they do that sometimes. Oh my God. Just in the middle of the night, they wake you up and send you outside." Jeez. But I think he just wanted to go see his wife and kids because he kind of just was like, "Well." Ugh. And he goes to the guys. You think first platoon will ever learn? He's like, I don't know, drill sergeant. And then he just then he then he finally went downstairs, probably to go home. And his name was Ilport. He got mad with me. He started he started yelling yeah, at me because I, I as I double whammyed him. Eventually, we became pretty good friends. But that's a crazy story. Yeah, yeah. that's just kind of the shenanigan, shenanigans that goes on. Yeah, I bet. You right. know, it's just so, like we were just so. How like was that. the whole readjustment period on your way back? How did that go? On the way back, uh. Honestly, it wasn't too hard. I had some life things that kind of sucked, but other than that, like I, I came back and I was, I was just enjoying myself. Nice. I had my phone. I was attached to my phone. It's like, oh wow, I can just text people right away without writing a letter and waiting nine days. That's crazy. <laughs> right? um, yeah. So yeah, that was a long story, but it takes a lot of explaining. Yeah, that. I don't know how much time story. I just, I just ran through, but <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Um, I guess what would you say is one huge lesson that you learned from basic training or maybe from that story or whatever? Um, the biggest lesson I learned from basic training is is like before I went to basic training, I'd always stress about like some small things. But I realized unless it's like life limb or like tragedy, it's not a whole lot to stress about because they give you a lot of things to stress about there. And it's mm-hmm. like, you know, you'll screw up here and maybe you get maybe you have to do push ups and sit ups and a whole bunch of stuff for like an hour, call that smoking. But it's not the end of the world like things happen in life but you can always recover it's not mm-hmm. like you know you failed this test it's not like it's going to be the end of the world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so who would you suggest go and check out some of these programs like basic tra- or the you know, national guard yeah mm-hmm. yeah um in reality i'd say um anybody who you know obvious any obviously it's like if you come from a from like a poor background the national guard is like a really good opportunity to you know get your university paid for at least for most of it It just Mm -hmm. covers tuition and some other stuff and uh gives you some good job experience so obviously like if you have like a poor background it's like a really good way to like jumpstart your career and everything you know it's like not just there's more benefits i I could discuss but Mm -hmm. there's that and anybody who really wants like excitement in life there's there can can be a lot of excitement like you can get deployed to germany all over the world you get 30 paid if you go active duty you get 30 paid days of vacation a year so you could go take a week long vacation to Germany and you get paid while doing it. Wow. Like, you know, there's like there's some good adventure, mm-hmm. like you can meet a lot of good people. Like I feel like if it's if it's a lifestyle that you could do, like like if you're in sports like football, wrestling, stuff like that, people that are used to that kind of lifestyle, like I feel like it's a really great thing. 
That's like, awesome. it's treated me well so far. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, and then did you have anything else? I know you wanted to kind of talk about the way back and the whole ordeal there. There's one more story there, but um, I can maybe tell that I, I can. It's gonna be a long story. I mean, you guys have any, you guys have any more questions about like the National Guard in general? I feel like there's more I could explain in that regard. I don't I know if I have any other stuff. questions about it. If if you feel like you just want to go on a um, spiel about it, go ahead. No, yeah, I could just like I could just talk about it. Yeah, so I'll ahead. give I'll give a little more background about the National Guard itself. So there's there's three components of the army. There's the reserve, National Guard, and active duty. So uh, Coach Diaz Diaz was uh he was active duty, and then he went Ranger School, which is like big time special forces, which is really cool. And then there's the National Guard and Reserve which is kind of like the reserve component. So like the National Guard is like got activated for the riots or for like a hurricane relief or like in Kenosha right now, like pretty sure Jake Gieber might be in Kenosha right now. Like it's the kind of stuff you activated for. Mm-hmm. And then you get deployed, you can get deployed to like Afghanistan, Syria, Korea, Germany, all over the world. So that happens. But right now for me and for the near future, it'll be one weekend a month of just drill, you know, just training. And then two weeks in the summer, once I graduate AIT. And that's really just the main commitment right there. Anything mm-hmm. after that is kind of like choice. So you could take this assignment or you can take this deployment mm. sort of thing. Uh-huh. It kind of comes and goes. Nice. but And that's that's kind of the National Guard. But in reality, it's kind of the same thing. It's just like, you know, part-time service. Instead of active duty, you're on base somewhere. Like Trey is going to Hawaii right now, which is kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. And then, But I'll be serving from Black River Falls. So and I'll be going to college. Yeah, that's that, and that's kind of like the big thing too. So, do you have plans after college? Or are you gonna continue that mm. um, six-year contract, or do you have any idea? Or are you just kind of waiting to see? So we'll we'll see. You know, I don't want to make any decisions now. Mm-hmm. Obviously, my life will be different in about five years from now because yeah. I signed up last November. Um, it'll be different then from now, and we'll see if I want to keep going. If maybe I want to go active duty. Who knows? Yeah. Like you know, I'll make I'll talk to my family, friends, and make that decision then. I'd say. Yeah. But as of right now, it's like I don't see anything wrong with, you know, continuing that out. Yeah. If you serve for 20 years, uh, you get a really nice retirement. So, like, really nice. That guy that we were paintballing with, mm-hmm. he was getting close on 20 years. So. Wow. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I could tell that one last story of coming home. Sure. Go ahead. Right, do we, we, do we have time, Jackson? Yeah, we got, like, six more minutes. Six left. more minutes? No. All right, I'll try to keep this as short as possible. Yeah, do it five so, minutes and then yeah, we can Yeah, so essentially – going home so at this point i graduated which means i've completed basic training um like i'm i'm just trying to get home at this point which is kind of screwy with coronavirus but yeah um so the day uh, the day we graduate we get done with our ceremony we're in our dress blues half the like most of the people weave straight from that ceremony in their like dress uniform straight to like the 43rd reception battalion so they can get sent off their ait like immediately wow but for split ops like me, we had to wait a day. So that day or the day before we got our, no, the next day we got our flight and itineraries. And um, I got mine, said I was going to fly from there to Chicago to Eau Claire. Then, but here's the thing. I had my family come down to stay in an airport so they could pick me up from the St. Louis airport. Mm-hmm. The whole time I was at basic training, I had no idea if it even worked, but we kind of just went with it because I can really just have them pick me up. But, like, I didn't want to do something I wasn't supposed to because I was talking to some uh, people, and they're like, you know, these are your orders. Like, if you don't do it, it might be bad. So I went up to the guy. He was a civilian who gave me my ticket, and I was like, hey, my family wants to pick me up from St. Louis Airport. It's like, oh, they want to pick you up from St. Louis Airport? Okay, here, hand me your ticket. He just wrote, canceled on the ticket. So I was like, are we good? Like, you know, you just told me, like, five minutes ago this is, like, my golden ticket out of here. He's like, yeah, 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 it's good. I just canceled your ticket, and your family picked you up from St. Louis. So I'm okay. And there's a couple other people that didn't get tickets. And he's like, I'll either give you your ticket tomorrow or you won't be getting a ticket because you're getting picked up from St. Louis or something. So I'm like, hey, I'm good. At this point, I'm like, yes, I'm going to get picked up from my family. Everything's going to be fine. Not necessarily. <laughs> so, like, 8.30 p.m. rolls around. One of the privates that didn't get a ticket runs downstairs asking, when am I going to get my ticket? The drill starts start freaking out because they think he's going to get stuck there. Because what they thought we were given was our tickets to get on the bus to get to the airport at the time. But it was really just our flight ticket. Uh. But they messed up. I know that now. But back then, they were like... So they called all of us down that didn't have a ticket. It's about 13 of us who were like split ops. And they said, you guys are going to get stuck here. 
you guys are stuck because you don't have tickets. And then I'm sitting there, give, I gave up my ticket, and yeah. I'm like, oh, no, I really screwed up. I thought I was doing the right thing, and I did the wrong thing. So I told him, I was like, I canceled my ticket because this is what this guy said. And he was like, you should have just not gone on the flight. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I could have done that. But I wanted to do it the right way. But mm-hmm. So they're like, you guys are going to get stuck here for at least another week. And then <laughs> what's interesting about me is, like, Sweat Ops have something called a mandatory return date, which mm-hmm. means that they have to come home by that date no matter what no matter where they're in training so like if they keep me there mine was september 7th so uh, that was august 7th i think so they look at me and it's like okay you're gonna get stuck here until like august or till like september 7th you're gonna be stuck here another month <laughs> and at that point i graduated the only thing i could do is really just do quarantine over again just sit there uh-huh. so i we all go upstairs and i'm like i'm like whoa i'm freaking out you know yeah and so i was just like we were all freaking out i remember one girl started crying um (laughs) because we just wanted to go home yeah Mm -hmm. and then the next day rolls around and it turns out all right they haul us over to the bus and my friend birch and i he didn't have a uh, he didn't have a ticket either so like we don't know if we're gonna get on this bus leave and they called our names and we got on the bus and they were like let's go (laughs) we were like so we were so piped just to get on the bus Uh uh-huh and then it worked out. But what was crazy about it is, is like they were telling us like some people would be stuck there for an extra week, and they were telling me I'd be stuck there for like an extra month. Yeah. This is my mandatory return date. Because oh, yeah. when I first looked at that mandatory return, I was like, you know, this could really screw me over because like what if I get stuck here and then they just keep me until September 7th? Luckily, they didn't. Yeah, man, that is crazy. Some crazy stories from Hank Bose. Hank, thank you for coming on again and sharing some of those and eating the MRE with us and yeah. explaining all that stuff. We're really happy that we were able to have you on today. Oh, yeah.